Time for Tech Talk Tuesday. About six o'clock. Let's see who's on here. Got two, three, four. Here they come. Y'all come on. I got some cool stuff to tell you about. Hey, Jim, Roger, Bryce. That guy's got the coolest name, Bryce Corley does. Hey, George, David, Diane, Sean. Hey, thank you all for tuning in. I drew a 360 degree circle and I'm not trying to make it perfect on the shape, but I might can do a little better right here. Doesn't really matter. It doesn't have anything to do with what I'm gonna try and convey to you today. That might be a little better. Nat, Scott, Diane, Mark, Derek, how y'all? Hey, Michael. I appreciate you guys clocking in here. Travis, Artilio, Barry. Hey, Barry. I got some good stuff. I got on here on this drawing. I have a TDC and I have 90 degrees after TDC and I have bottom dead center, which is 180 degrees after top. And then I have 90 after bottom and 90 before top. That's one thing I want to tell you guys is these 90s right here, this 90 on this side and the 90 over here, this is halfway between TDC and the bottom, which is 180 degrees and 90 is halfway there and 90 is halfway there. Hey, Corinne, Nana, Mark, John, JJ, Caesar, Chuck, cool. Glad y'all are clocked in. Okay. All right. So this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and break this down to a little bit easier to digest information than what you see, hear, and read. And it might be basic for some of you guys. Hey, Jeremy, and you guys that are, you know, camshaft geniuses or experts or whatever, this, some of this stuff may be a little elementary for you. But look, 99% of the people out there that buy cams, use cams, well, most of us use cams, except for you electric guys, and they have some cam in there that's doing something. It might be on a toggle switch, but they all have like a little cam in them. But what I wanted to explain to you is, is how an engine, an internal combustion engine, four-stroke, this crankshaft goes around two full turns in a full firing cycle. And I'm going to try my best to show you. I'm going to do a little, I'm going to say, okay, we're going to start at TDC, and then we're going to rotate through the intake stroke to the bottom. And then at the bottom, this intake stroke, hey, John, Rodrigo, and then it turns into a compression stroke. And then the compression stroke turns into a power stroke. And then the power stroke turns into an exhaust stroke. And that takes 720 degrees of rotation. We all think of an RPM as being one revolution per minute. Okay, that's cool, that's true. But in order to get all four strokes done and all four uh, of, the, of the intake, compression, power, and exhaust, it takes two full revolutions. So that's 720 degrees. And this sounds crazy. Hey, Daryl, John, I just want to like share this with you guys because it's, it's just become such a good question and a good tech conversation that I have with so many people now that we're, we're selling some really cool custom camshafts for the twin cams and for the Milwaukee eights, which I'll tell you about another time because this is not a commercial. This is a tech talk. I will flavor my tech talks with a little commercials because I make the payments at star power, star racing power, and uh, we're still making payments. And so I have to still sell some stuff every now and then, but I appreciate you guys checking in. Hey, Mark. Hey, Daryl. So this will apply to every one of you guys, any gearhead, any racer, or any person that has a car or truck that has a piston and gasoline or diesel, this supplies, okay? Motorcycles too. 
This is not just Harleys. This is all engines, all internal combustion engines, okay? Now, when we, when we know and we accept the fact that it takes 720 degrees for it to complete all four cycles, that's why it's called a four-cycle engine. It's got an intake stroke, it's got a compression stroke, it's got a power stroke, and then an exhaust stroke. That takes all the way down for the piston, all the way up for the piston, all the way down for the piston, and all the way up for the piston in order to get those four jobs done. Now, this is a, two, several things. I want you to know how bad this whole thing is a compromise. Because if we build an engine, hey, Chris and Ian and Ron, if we build an engine that opened the intake valve at TDC and it stayed open for the whole intake stroke and then the intake valve closed at the bottom, that would be a 180-degree camshaft. If we had both valves shut, intake and exhaust, and then we compressed the mixture, the intake, which is the air and fuel, if we compress that all the way back to TDC, that would be 180 degrees of compression. And then we would light the spark plug at TDC and then it would be power stroke all the way to the bottom. And that would be 180 degrees of power stroke. And then we would have to ask the exhaust to get out of the engine. So we would open the exhaust valve here and push it all the way out to TDC. So another 180. Problem is, is that engine would make it wouldn't be enough power to get you to the racetrack. Matter of fact, it might work at idle. It might work at 500 or 1,000 RPMs. I'm not going to build one. I'm not interested in that. I want one that makes more horsepower per cubic inch than competitors or people that are trying to sell the same thing I sell. I want to make more horsepower per cubic inch than they sell. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about how all this works. So in the compromised world of the internal combustion engine, we're going to have to open the intake valve before TDC. Let's make it really simple so that I can explain it. And it really doesn't matter about the numbers, but I'm gonna tell you how to figure them. Let's open the intake valve at 45 degrees before top dead center. Now, the reason I picked that is because it's halfway between 90 and TDC is 45 degrees. So let's do intake valve open, I-V-O at 45 degrees. So when you see intake valve open at 45, that means before top dead center, all right? And then let's go down here and let's trap this mixture in after we get the intake stroke going and we get the piston all the way at the bottom and we want to close the intake valve at 45 degrees after bottom. So let's call that intake valve close at 45 after bottom dead center. Let me add back up here before TDC. This is intake valve open before top dead center, 45 degrees. Intake valve closing at 45 degrees after bottom. So how much duration does that cam have? We already know it's got 45 degrees before and we know it's got 45 degrees after and we have to add this 180 in there. So the calculator, my AARP old man calculator, big numbers, big buttons. Let's do 45 plus 45, which is 45 before and 45 after, and then add 180 degrees for the intake stroke. That's a 270 degree duration camshaft. That's just making this simple, okay? Breaking it down. So we're gonna call this a 270 degree intake cam, which is really large. That's like pro stock use, or some people that are real crazy about cam timing. But 270 degrees at 50 thou lift is a lot. Of duration but I want you to know this blue represents 270 degrees duration now does that did I did I hover around too much or did you understand 45 degrees before top dead center let's make a, a travel that's we open the valve at 45 degrees before top dead center we pull it through all the way a full intake stroke and then we trap it shut at 45 after so that blue line represents how far the crankshaft turned with the intake valve open. Now, some if I say, well, yeah, but it's a full turn is 360 degrees. How can you have the intake valve open for 270 of 360 degrees? Well, it's not. That's great, Roger. You're funny. I'll deal with you another time. Sit on the sideline and learn. Or just be silly, because you make me laugh all the time. Hey, Lee, Brian, y'all are so funny. Thank you for watching, CC Brian. Hey, look, I just want to tell you this. So 270 degrees of rotation on a 270-degree on a camshaft, okay? 
Now, the tricky part is, is, okay, why is this opening before TDC? This is going to be the answer of the day right here. Let's say that we're going to have, and you, let me tell you where full lift is. Full lift is halfway between where it opens and halfway where it closes. So full lift, if you shoot over here somewhere, let me, t you see how I figure that? It's this many degrees to here and this many degrees to here. What is that number? And let's do, let's do the math with a calculator. 270 degrees of duration divided by two equals 135 degrees, okay? If we subtract the 45 opening number from it, did that wrong. 45, nope. 270 degrees divided by two equals 135 degrees minus 45 opening equals 135 minus 45 equals 90. I'm glad you guys were watching and were already smarter than me. The lobe center is at 90 degrees. This intake cam is at 90 degrees because it opens at 45 before top and it closes at 45 after bottom. See how easy that is to figure? This lobe center is at 90 degrees. That is crazy. Does that make sense to you guys? All right, let's get it more complicated now. Now let's put the exhaust in there. Remember, 700, 720 degrees to get all four of the cycles done, so now we're gonna put exhaust in there. We're gonna open the exhaust valve at 45 degrees after top dead center on the power stroke. And we're gonna put a 270 degree exhaust cam in it as well. So, so let's do the math. I mean, let's do the travel. Here it goes. Into, the exhaust valve opens. It comes over here and then it's gonna close at 45 degrees after top dead center. So our lobe center on the exhaust cam is halfway between the opening and the closing. Here's the opening and here's the closing. The exhaust cam lobe center is also 90 degrees. So we have both cams lobe centers at 90 degrees. All right, let's walk through it nice and easy. Intake valve opens at 45 before top dead center. Go through the intake stroke, takes a whole 180 degrees, and then it goes 45 to close. And then after that, we squeeze it and squeeze it and squeeze it and squeeze it, and, we, and then we're gonna light it to com and make comp the power stroke. And then when we get over here, right after 90 degrees of the power stroke, we're gonna open the exhaust valve, and then we're gonna use this whole time all the way around here to get the exhaust out. So that's four strokes, intake, compression, power and exhaust and he's like man why would you use a camshaft like that why would you use a camshaft why wouldn't you use a 180 degree intake and a 180 degree exhaust and use only the intake stroke to suck the intake and fuel in and use only the exhaust stroke to push the exhaust out the reason is because we can't make any power with a little baby engine like that that runs at idle this this if you put change all these numbers to open the valve here and close the valve here and open the valve here and close the valve here. If you put all those numbers on TDC and bottom and top, you would have a little baby camshaft that would only run at maybe 500 RPM. Now, I'm going to change, I'm gonna to talk to you about why we open the intake valve this far back. Because when we need when, when the piston is going down, let's move over here and I'll, maybe I can talk it into it. Let's move over a little bit. Okay. When the piston is going down on the intake stroke, there's the uh, connecting rod goes here and the piston's going here. Okay. Can you see that okay? When the piston's going down on the intake stroke, whenever this gets to 90 degrees, 
from the center, from the main to the rod, to the rod pin, to the, to the um, rod, when this is 90 degrees, right there, that's where you got the most demand on the cylinder head. You got the piston going the fastest. The piston never goes faster than it does right there. And if we do the math on this, this ends up being somewhere around 75 degrees after TDC. You can change rod lengths, you can change uh, strokes, and you can change a few other things, but it's always going to be between 77, 78, 79. I'm going to call this 78 just to be a little bit more accurate. 78 degrees after top dead center. All right, where is that over here? That would be somewhere in this range, between 45 and 90. It might be a little closer over here, but that's going to be 74. Eight degrees after top dead center, okay? At 78 degrees after top dead center, you're going to need the valve to be as open as it can. I'm talking about big lift because we're asking for big port demand. There is also a lag time to it where when the piston's going down, it's pulling on the air coming in the, pulling on the air and the fuel coming through the cylinder head. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to keep moving this so that we're at big lift when the piston's going the fastest. If we started the cam, if we started the intake valve to open at TDC, it would take a long time to get it to full lift or a big enough lift for when the biggest port demand is. And then the rest of the story down here at the bottom, which is really complicated, y'all. I didn't think about how to explain it. So as you can see, I'm fumbling a little bit, but hey, that's my own, that's my own problem. Anyway, when the piston goes to the bottom and stops at the at bottom dead center, the air is still coming in. And when it stops coming in at whatever RPM you're at, you want the intake valve to shut. So we have to pick out what number that is, and it's only good for one RPM range. If you've got a 270 duration cam, and you open the intake at 45 before TDC, and you close at 45 after bottom, you have to, advance, you have, to have the cam open before the CDC so that we can get uh, that cam at a big enough lift when the piston's going the fastest and then we have to close it after the bottom because the inertia and the ram supercharger of the air coming in by inertia is still coming and the, the, the pressure inside the cylinder is still lower than outside the cylinder. So and whenever that gets equal, when the piston starts coming back up on the, on the uh, compression stroke, the piston's coming back up and the air's still coming in. Whenever this goes zero, that's when you want to slam this intake valve shut. Race cams, race cams and high performance cams close the intake valve between here and here. Pretty normal. Low RPM engines, where you want to trap a lot of air fuel mixture at low RPM, you want to close the intake valve sooner after bottom. And if you've got a real high RPM engine, like a pro stock four cylinder, you might close it way back here so that you're getting at each speed you have to, this has to change. So now we're seeing Harley and several other companies now are doing variable timing camshafts. So you can have sh uh, short duration, early intake closing for low RPM and have a uh, long duration and a later intake closing in order to make more power at high RPM. Exhaust side, same show. Let's do a pressure, let's do a pressure curve, a semi, uh, 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 kind of a, like a little, just an idea of a cylinder pressure curve, all right? This is not gonna be totally accurate, but it's the idea of what matters. At TDC, we're going to have cylinder pressure that's going to be peak over here and building over here and tapering off over here. All right, this is going to be the bottom, and this is going to be the bottom, and this is TDC. So if you you got to you got to start the spark way over here, you got to light the engine before TDC. So let's say 30 degrees before. You light the spark plug and it starts building pressure and then you want the pressure to be where the piston is going down. So you want the biggest pressure in the cylinder to be then. And when we do the exhaust, we have the same problem. We got exhaust on all the way after we go intake stroke, we get the air trapped in here. Then we do compression and then we light it and then we're going to 
uh, make the power. And then right before we get the power stroke finished, we have to start opening the exhaust valve because it takes a long time to get that much exhaust out. It takes a long time. So we got to start the exhaust valve opening early and we got to close the exhaust valve later. So let's look, let's talk about, uh, after the power stroke, after the power stroke, after the cylinder pressure, it's going to take a minute for this exhaust to get out. So we have to start here. We've got a lot of pressure going off on the power stroke over here. And if we waited till here to open for the exhaust stroke and get, start going, we'd run out of time before the exhaust is clean and before the combustion chamber is clean. And we've got all the dead, uh, the, the burnt gas and air out of the cylinder. So we got to start it early and end it late. Now, understand when I was talking to you the first time about the compromise. This is all a compromise. And, the, and, and you have to, that's why camshafts are such a compromise. The camshaft is going to be too big for low RPM and be too small for high RPM. So we have to pick out what that number we want it to be. If we could, we'd have a cam that had the valve closed. And then when right when it was time, we'd have it open the valve and stay open. And then right when it was time, we would have it close the valve. That would be a square cam lobe. We can't have that because if it was a roller cam here and you close, 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 then the lobe comes in here and asks the valve to go to full lift that fast, it would break the roller off. It would crash the valves. It would crash the springs. It would crash all the parts. So we have to be smooth and gentle. So the camshaft has to look like the camshaft lift curve has to look like this. It has to start opening way over here, and then it has to build acceleration and then open the valve as fast as it can. Then it's got to slow down its rate of lift so that it can stop here. And if you ever look on the Internet, you can Google valve loft. This is what valve loft would look like. That's when the lifter leaves the lobe and when it comes back down, it comes back down in its own time and you usually crash a bunch of parts over here. So when we drop valves, break springs, a lot of times it's something that we don't understand or see. And if you look it up, you can read about the Spintron and the Spintron tells, gives you a little bit better idea. It has a big electric motor, 75 horse or 100 horsepower motor that spins your engine over so you can watch the valves and the valve springs and the cams and the lifters and the rock arms. Yeah, base circle too. You have to have a nice smooth one there. Now, now that I got all this cam timing on our on our uh, 720 cycle, let's break it down and see how really horrible the efficiency of a of a four stroke combustion engine is. When do you think we would light off the spark plug? If this is the intake stroke, this is the compression stroke, this is the power stroke, and this is the exhaust stroke. Four strokes, piston down intake, piston up compression, piston down power, piston up on exhaust. Where would you light the spark plug off? All right, let's say you would light the spark plug off at TDC. Because you've got compression and then you've got power. Why wouldn't you wait till TDC when the piston starts going back down to light it off? Well, reason is, is the gasoline and the fuel takes so long to burn when you're spinning an engine Let's say you're spinning at 7,000 RPM. I saw on the internet the other day, one of my friends was talking about 100 times a second or 150 times a second, the piston's going up and down. And every other time it goes up and down, you gotta light the spark plug. Every other time it goes up and down, you gotta suck the air and fuel in through the intake port. Every other time it goes up and down, you gotta get the exhaust out. Every other time you gotta squeeze it for compression and every other time you got to have an intake stroke where you pull it in. So it's such a serious compromise. In reality, we have to light the spark plug way over here so that it will be burning with the most pressure over here and over here and over here so that the piston's going down on the power stroke. One more time over here. When you detonate an engine and it spark knocks and it starts breaking parts and you can hear it pinging, a lot of times this crankshaft that I drew and that blue guy wants to keep going. Mains, rod, pin, connecting rod, wrist pin, and then piston, okay? Very elementary. But if you 
have peak cylinder pressure, when these are in a straight line, peak cylinder pressure, you will see some things you had never seen before. You'll see gasoline light off too soon. You'll see explosions. You'll see head gaskets blow out. You'll see cylinders blow out. You'll see pistons break off. You'll see connecting rods shove the wrist pin right through the center. You'll see the main bearings break bearings. You'll see the rod bearings break bearings because of this detonation. In reality, what we want is we want all that pressure, that maximum pressure to be on when the connecting rod is over here, the rod pin, and we can draw it here. The reason that is is when that pressure hits now, this crankshaft is going to turn. And when this crankshaft turns, of course, we're going to transmit the power to the clutch and the transmission. It's very elementary, I understand, but it's a lot to learn. And I, and I really want you guys to ask me some questions when you get a minute because I want to talk about the compromise that we have. So when a guy tells you what cam you need, you got to really wonder how much he really knows about that and why it is what you need versus what everybody's buying or like, like if you went on the internet right now, let's say on Facebook, and you said, hey, what cam do I need for my Screaming Eagle 110? Well, you'll get, you'll get everybody that's read the internet. You'll get everybody that's looked on the forums and, you know, been to the shops and heard because everybody has their opinion of what the cam needs to be. And in reality, it's a combination of things. And so we have thrasher kits we do here. We, we, do, we take the 103 twin cams, we put a 107 kit in them. We have the 110 twin cams, Screaming Eagle, and we put our 113 kit in it. There's several reasons why we use the sizes we use. And since we port the heads, we put the valves in, and we get the sizes of the ports and the compression ratio and the combustion chambers, we know what cam to use to get the result that the customer's looking for. So power curve on the dyno. Whew. That'll make you seasick one. If you've got a short duration cam and you're closing the intake valve early, you can have power on the left and not so much on the right. This is RPM. If you want it to pull more at high RPM, you're going to need a longer duration cam and it's going to have more power here. This is a torque and horsepower curve and of course it's always at 5252. And if you want more power left of 5,200 RPM, you need to sh close the intake valve sooner, which means go from a 270 cam, say, to a 250 cam. And if you want to make more power higher than 5,200, you need to maybe go from a 250 cam to a 270 cam. Now, those are really exaggerated numbers. Nice socks, thanks. It's got a shark on it. Look at his teeth and his eyes. He got a little blood on this tooth. Thank you all for noticing. That is so funny. <laughs> anyway, I'm out of time. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope I didn't confuse you by jumping around so fast, but I have fun with it. I love sharing this knowledge, and one day I'll explain it in a way that will make sense to you because we can hear all we want to hear. We can hear and listen and listen and listen, and it only goes in right one time. It might go in right several times, but... A lot of times it bounces off of our ears until it's exactly what we need to know in order to make the decisions that we need. And I love sharing it. Thank you all for uh, tuning in. Stay tuned. Oh, George at StarRacing.com. Email me questions. You can instant, instant message me. Um, I'm uh, Bryce Starr at on Instagram, and I got my own Facebook page, George Bryce, and then, of course, our Star Power page. And uh, we put... We put information every now and then about the cams and about the thrasher kits at um, starracing.com. Thank you all again. Uh, great day. Everybody have a nice day and look after each other. May God bless you all. Thank you for watching.